G'day everyone, Dicko here with another kick-ass walkthrough. And I'm happy to introduce a brand new mini-series on basic rigging inside of Maya, where we're going to create this actual character you see on the screen. In this video, we're going to start off with just modeling out the robot to get it ready for rigging. And of course, if you like what you see here, please feel free to give a like, a sub, and hit the bell notification so you never miss out on future kick-ass content. And every little bit of support helps tremendously so thank you so to start off with with this particular video i do have an expectation that you have a basic grasp of how maya works what it does how the tools work in general so extrusions creating shapes that sort of thing so i'm just going to start off with a cube um and i'm just going to shape it into a general what do they call it trapezoid shape inverted trapezoid shape to be the basis of our body I'm going to add a bevel to that um, mesh. I was going to say bevel modifier, but this is not Blender. This is uh, destructive after all. Um, so a simple bevel around the edges to give it a nice little bit of um, softness around those edges. And then I'm going to create a very simple torus object. I'm going to play with the settings in the channel box and just get it to sort of mimic what will be the ring around the eye of that um, eye that we're going to create in a second. Then I'm going to create a sphere, rotate that so the um, the triangles are facing the front because that's going to be the basis for our eye pupil. And then I'm going to group those together and then scale it down to fit within the body of the robot. Just a quick note, I'm scaling it on the group, not the individual pieces. So the group itself, I'm scaling down so both pieces scale and move at the same time. And then I'm adjusting on an individual basis if I need to. The other thing to be aware of is the um, direction in which the robot is facing. So in almost every circumstance that you create a rig, you want to have the robot facing the front of the view. So just make sure that when you are modeling this stuff that you're modeling it in the right direction. I think I make the mistake here where I'm actually modeling backwards. So it's facing backwards. And uh, in the future, what I'm gonna have to do is rotate the, the mesh in the other direction or um, I'm going to reposition the eye onto the other side of the body to face the right direction. So I made that mistake in this video. So I decided to keep that in there just in case you guys end up with the same problem. Um, so it's a simple fix. Don't worry about that. The next thing I'm going to do is just create a very simple wheel. Again, another torus. Um, it can be any size that you want it to be. So you can still have a bit of creative freedom here in what sort of shapes you want to go with or whatever. But I'm just keeping it really simple. And as you can see here, I've <laughs> flipped the eye around. So it's facing the right direction, of course. Um, so that's looking a lot better now. Um, and I'm keeping the robot really simple because I want to rig it in a really simple way. I don't want to use joints or uh, any fancy deformers or anything like that. So I'm just going to keep it really simple. So I'm going to add a, another torus to start building out sort of like the frame around the wheel that will sort of act as the fulcrum for that wheel. So I'm just cutting off one half of that of that um, torus. And then I'm just going to extrude out a length of that geometry. So it sort of acts like almost like a bike, you know, like a bike frame. And that's going to sit on top of the wheel as a, as a sort of frame support for that uh, particular mesh. I'm just filling the holes on the um, the ends of that. I mean, not necessarily required, but uh, keeps things nice and clean. Rotating that 90 degrees, scaling it down to fit, and then just placing it inside or around that wheel area that I want. So just, you know, adjust it as you will. Whatever you think is aesthetically pleasing is really up to you. And as you can see, I'm not doing anything too crazy here, just using basic shapes, cutting out little bits here and there, but nothing too egregious, no, no, nothing like super complex hard surface modeling. So really, really simple. So I've gone ahead and created that little frame and I'm just gonna create the inside of the wheel now. So that's gonna be like the, um, the pivot or, um, yeah, I think it's called pivot uh, within the wheel. So that will act as sort of like a, a very simple little support again within the wheel. And in order to line up that little pivot with the wheel center, I'm gonna use the match transforms function inside of Maya to match it perfectly into the center of that wheel, scale it down. And now we have this uh, wheel that is sort of sitting inside perfectly. I'm gonna make another um, cylinder and that's gonna act as sort of like a inside track for the uh, the wheel. Again, this is all like sort of 
optional stuff, but it just gives it a little bit of uh, solidity that I like. So as you can see, it kind of looks like a bike wheel now or a tricycle wheel. Um, yeah, I think this looks cool. I've duplicated that cylinder again and just given it a little bit of a, another piece to sit inside there. Just a, again, it's mostly aesthetic, um, but it allows it to look, you know, kind of nice. Last thing to do is add a little bit of a pole to, to connect the wheel base to the body. And that will be the basis for our robot body. Pretty much all good to go. Next thing I'm gonna work on is the antenna. So again, another cylinder, gonna keep it real simple. Again, I'm not gonna use any fancy rigging tools like um, skin deformers or anything like that to create the antenna. Um, all I'm gonna do is create a cylinder and then I'm gonna bevel out the top and the bottom and just give it a fraction of one and add three or four segments to uh, round out those ends and you get this little pill shape thing. And all I'm gonna do now is scale that down and sort of put it on top of the antenna like so. And yeah, that's the first segment. I'm gonna duplicate that. That will be the second segment. Duplicate that one more time. Once I tidy things up a little bit. Duplicate that one more time. And then on the top, I'm just gonna add a sphere on the top to act as like the top of that antenna. Very simple sort of stuff. So again, just working with basic primitives the entire way through this, um, this modeling process. So nothing too crazy. So you may have noticed I just duplicated one antenna piece and that's because I'm gonna use that new duplicate piece as the basis for our arms in the future. So um, before I do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and realign the pivot point of that group I just made for the antenna. Um, hold down D, realign that pivot point and then sort of scale down the antenna to fit. Now for the arms, really simple, just rotate 90 degrees in I think the Z position and then sort of line up that pill shape to sort of be the length of the arm that you want. So we're gonna have one for the upper arm, one for the forearm, and that will be it really. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit as of an aesthetic around that arm. I'm gonna add a little bit of a, um, a shoulder ball and uh, I'm just gonna scale down a single uh, sphere, position that around where the shoulder would be, and that's kind of it. So there we go, shoulders scale down, sitting those together, lining those up, and just making sure that it all kind of, you know, lines up nicely. So I'm putting on wireframe preview just to see how that looks. Just lining that up. And that's basically it for the arm. So to duplicate the other side of the arm, I'm gonna group those um, three objects together with uh, pushing control G. And then I'm going to duplicate that group with uh, shift D or control D. And then with the duplicate group, I'm going to scale it minus one in X. Like so. So now we have the entire robot body ready to roll. Perfect. All right, so now, now that we've done the model itself, you may notice as we look through the model and do a little bit of housekeeping, that different parts of the model have different kinds of transforms. Some have scale transforms, some have rotation transforms, some have issues in that regard. So what we need to do is select everything, right click on the channel box and freeze all, or you can push the little freeze all button inside of your modeling tool set. And that will just reset all the transforms, all the scales to be uniform. Everything will be scaled with a one to one ratio and all the rotations will be fixed out. The next thing to do is just to go through all the different body parts and name them accordingly. So I'm gonna go ahead and group anything that's grouped. I'm gonna give it the right label. So in the case of the eye, I gave it a, the label of the group eye. And then I'm gonna label the segments of the eye. So I have the eye socket and then the eye. I'm gonna label the wheel as a wheel, for instance, and just go through the motions and um, relay label things appropriately. So depending on how you've designed your robot, um, you can give them different labels, but the real thing to be aware of is that everything has to be labeled nice and cleanly and consistently across the entire mesh. By doing this, you're going to make sure that everything is nice and easy to understand. The person who may be rigging this in the future or yourself, as you go to rig it yourself, won't be confused by all the different parts and pieces and the purpose of all those different parts and pieces is, pieces, is, pieces. And it just makes the whole rigging process just way, way easier, less stressful and less confusing. Okay, so the next thing to do is go ahead and group together the different parts of the body. So for instance, the antenna will be part of an antenna group. I'm gonna name that as antenna. Um, 
an arm group will be named arm group. Again, going through, making sure that everything is named properly. But a left arm group and a right arm group makes sense, right? So that we can select those easily. We're also going to have a group for different components of the wheel. So the wheel frame that's supporting the body can be its own group in of itself. So just basically the frame that goes around the wheel, the, um, the fulcrum and the support, that can be one group in of itself. And then there's going to be the components of the wheel itself. The parts that rotate with the wheel will be grouped together into one group. Call that wheel. Pretty obvious. And then we have all these different segments. So we have a body group, a left arm group, right arm group, an antenna group, wheel frame group, and then a wheel group. And then we're going to group them all under a master group and call it geometry robot. Now to make sure that everything is ultra, ultra, ultra clear, what I'm going to do is prefix all of my geometry with the prefix geo. So geo for geometry, I'm going to go to my modify tab, prefix hierarchy names, and write geo underscore and that will just rename everything in my hierarchy with the same prefix so that means i know that every single part of this group is geometry based so geometry as in polygons because in the future we may have uh control groups constraints all those sort of things that can make things a little bit confusing in the outliner for you to sort of understand what is doing what so um, it's really good to be super clear about the function and the purpose of anything that's inside of your scene. So in this case, the purpose of this thing is literally to be the model, the geometry of the character that you're going to be working with. So that is the reason why I've put the prefix geo on everything geometry related, if that makes sense. So now you are free to go ahead and do all the fun stuff like add your own shaders and add colors and all sort of stuff. So I'm just going ahead and adding um, shaders using the Arnold shader groups. Again, depending on what preferred render engine you're using, again, you can use whatever you like. You can use the standard shader, you can use Arnold, you can use Redshift, you can use whatever the hell you want really. Uh, it's up to you. Um, the process is basically the same. Right click on an object, assign a material, give it a color, etc. Or if you have to, um, do a specific region of a single piece of geometry, go into edit mode, select the faces you want to assign a material to, and then give it that assessment, um, assignment, sorry, of a new material. Again, really straightforward stuff. Um, this is the same as it would be in Blender, as it would be in Maya, as it would be in Cinema 4D or any other bloody software that is 3D based. So, um, again, I'm not going to go into the details of how to do this all that much. It's just really up to you whatever colors you want to give it if you just want to keep it a plain sort of thing and then just focus on the process of rigging for the first time you don't even need to add color that's fine too but in our case i want to give it a little bit of personality so i'm just going ahead giving it a red material a little bit of gloss adding a little bit of chrome on the framing all that sort of stuff um refining a little bit here and there but otherwise it's going to be exactly the same as what it was before um so yeah just do what you want to do with the rest of the model that's it so you may be wondering uh, how different can your model be for this tutorial. I would keep it fairly similar in scope. So the idea that you'd have uh, a body, a single wheel for the base, two arms and the antenna, that will be enough to get across the idea of what we're trying to do with this rig. Now it can be of any style you want it to be, of course, um, and it can be as complex or as simple as you want to be, depending on what you're building. Um, but those basic segments are the parts that I'd say start off with for this tutorial series. I wouldn't go any more complicated than that. So don't add extra wheels, don't add legs or anything like that. because I'm not going to do any sort of leg rigs or anything along those lines. Keep it really simple because what I want to do is really get across the idea of how to rig intelligently, to rig um, in a way that is adaptive so basically if you need to change the mesh or change the way that the rig works it's a lot easier to make fixes if you make mistakes and then also um, you want it to perform relatively easily as well so um, if you have a slower computer or you have a something that you know isn't very stable um, keeping it as simple as it is here will allow you to practice without being overwhelmed or overburdened by performance issues 
Okay, so to sum up, keep it simple, keep it easy. And in the next video, we're gonna talk about how to understand or get a basic grasp of how constraint systems work in Maya. They're a little bit different to Blender in some ways, but in other ways, they're very, very similar. Now, the way we're gonna rig this character in the future is basically completely using constraints. A very simple method that works fine for a character as simple as this, um, but it will help you understand how to break down logic and how to break down the hierarchy so that everything works well together. And then you can have a really dynamic little rig in even the simplest terms like we have here. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, feel free to give a like, subscribe, all that sort of crap, bell notifications, you know how it all works. And if you really like what I do, feel free to support me on Patreon. Every little bit helps. And I really appreciate the support. So thank you very much. So until then, catches, have fun, and good luck with the modeling. Cheers.